you know, when I looked at the battery, the 36 volt, 20 amp hour battery, that's kind of like, yeah. man, it looks like a little motorcycle battery. I said, there's no way this thing's not gonna make it, right? Like, we're gonna go like 30 minutes and this thing's gonna die. <laughs> Guys, I had this pegged at five speed, which is full speed, for a mile all the way back to the house. And when you look at the battery life, it's still showing pretty damn near 100%. Yeah. Blown away, dude. Hey guys, Captain Mike Morales here with Factory Pack and Tackle. Special guest today, great friend, that's Chris Castro, brand ambassador for Old Town. Hey guys. Thank you for being here, Chris. My pleasure. That ballast is sort of designed underneath. Yeah. Those signs kind of stick it out. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's the same. We still have full power. The world of kayak fishing is changing. My name's Chris Castro, and today we get our hands on perhaps one of the most anticipated kayaks of 2024 the EPDL. In order to give this the best comprehensive review, I'll be joining Mike Morales, owner of Fin Factory Kayak and Tackle, and is a world-renowned guide in the South Texas region. And things are going to get interesting. First, we'll set sail in some rather sporty conditions. Then we'll go both unassisted and assisted to see how well it competes against standalone motors. Once that's complete, we'll bring them in some rather calm environments to see if any performance has fluctuated. Finally, when we get out of the chaos, we'll conclude our first impressions, followed by a final review. Price point, performance, aesthetics, is the EPDL for you? All that coming up. First impressions are everything in this industry, and I'm excited. There's, there's always something special about sitting on a kayak for the very first time. Wow, this just feel. Oh, oh wow, that's weird. Huh. You can you can definitely tell the weight when you're deploying the drive. So like you know, because it's all spring loaded. Yeah. So it's he it's definitely the drive is definitely heavier for sure. So it, it, the drive basically, once you de you know you pull it off of its little it pinchers, it, it just falls in. Yeah. So definitely an increase in weight. Oh, that feels good though. Even man, there's a little like grindiness. Just in reverse, there's a little grindiness, but I don't feel I don't feel really that much difference going forward. I've just realized that there are three phases of operation when it comes down to the EPDL. Manual, assist, and full motorization with five different levels of speed. Oh wow, dude. This is different. It's like you're walking on clouds, kind of. Like, like you're not really pressing. Uh, you could do this, like you could do this for 12 hours and not feel anything. It, it's, it, makes some, it makes some noise. Now the, the sound does increase when you start doing the assist. You get a little bit higher pitch. Let's see here. Let me, let me try something. Oh. oh wow. So it, it doesn't go by itself. You have to actually It does it. once you leave it on cruise. Okay. But the way you engage it on cruise control is to pedal and that engages the motor. And then once you stop on cruise. It's going to maintain whatever, whatever speed that, that speed you're on. Yeah, yeah. So, which is good. Um, it's pulling 41.6 volts on a level three. Maybe we'll test that out on full speed and see how much the performance yeah. drop is. When you look at this, essentially it's a juiced up big water 13.2, right? And so it's going to have completely the same feel, the same, I guess, water dynamics. It's going to feel, perform just as comfortable, just as great. And I like that. I, I was a real big fan uh, of that kayak. So now to bring this full light into a, yeah, an EPDL with an assist, 
Uh, my first impressions are that it's great, man. I love the way it responds. It's really not like putting that much work, and you can just hear the motor cut. So when I'm chilling, uh, there's it is what it is. And then when I start getting going, then I start to uh, the motor engages, and the amount of effort that comes out of my my legs means to me just right off the bat more time on the water, more casting, and I'm gonna feel a lot better when I get off the water. When it comes down to motorizing kayaks, Old Town has without a doubt led in innovation, but have throttled back just a little bit on speed. Up next, we're gonna find out if they have answered that call. We have picked a formidable opponent, equivalent to a 1.8 horsepower. And the goal is to run it upwind, downwind, and then jump into a neutral environment. Are you in full speed? No, no I'm half. I'm just gonna run some speed tests uh, just to see what this can do. Right now I'm on cruise. Half speed, we'll line up and we'll, we'll let them lay it here. Yeah, we're still flying. Do you know what I'm like? For sure, I, I could take off. So, no, I'm pedaling. We're going over five miles per hour here, too. Yeah, this is real. Pretty good. Over five? So, the steering is good, but I will say there's a very slight, slight difference on turning performance, I guess. So, the Big Water 13.2 would turn just a little bit quicker. I don't know why yet. To go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and at times even pulling, 
on a $2,500 independent motor is not only good news for Old Town fans, but just good news for the industry. They have proven that clean and simple all-in-one performance is attainable. Are you maxed out? Yeah. All right, so guys, this is, um, we're now back in the canal and it's pretty calm. And, you know, we're doing about 4.7, 4.8 full throttle. Um, the torpedo is at full throttle. And it's pretty close, man. It's, it's almost neck and neck. How much, what's my percentage at? The battery? Yeah. Well, it's hard to tell because I don't know what you started at, but this is at... We started at 80. Is it 39%? Started at 80. Okay, so 39%. So we lost, so let's we just lost say 40. We lost 50%. Dude, this is saying we still have full power. Talking about the main piece, because I've been on the Old Town Sports with Big Water, mm -hmm. uh, the non-EPDL, uh, and man, I, I love that boat. I thought the boat was, was quick, it was agile. You're about the same weight from a battery and motor. When you add it all up, it's about the same. Oh weight. yeah. This this may kind of bring it to the next level. You know, be a little bit more weight, but it's you know it's it's, it's definitely heavier than than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I mean. The beauty of it is the simplicity of it. You know, the very simple plug and play. The battery is nicely housed in the motor, in, in the boat itself. It's, it's got its own bracket with tie downs. You don't have to come up with any type of solutions or put the battery in a crate. Very small, compact, and it fits very nicely in the boat. And all you do is just put the drive on, plug it in, and then you're ready to go, you know? So I thought that that was a big, big benefit. There's no screwing things on, and putting the throttle controller here and then running the cabling, none of that. It's just simple plug and play. Um, speed wise, I was pretty blown away. I, I wasn't expecting the speed to be the way that it was, but man, when you're pushing four and a half to five knots, or five miles per hour, you know, on a drive that has a motor built in, man, that's, that's pretty big and that's without pedaling. Now, in rougher conditions against the wind, you know, the Torquedo had a, an advantage over, over yeah. this motor from a speed standpoint. Uh, but man, I mean, when it was smooth and easy and calm, I think we were neck and neck. I yeah, mean, you know, it's, it's tough to to figure out the how the elements are gonna play into the dynamics of the boat itself. But when we and you were both going, you were definitely leading ahead on me yeah. with your motor. Then when we would cross and go in, I, I would get a little giddy up, mm -hmm. but then you'd take off a little bit. So they're pretty, pretty close, but what I noticed is that when we were coming back in cool, calm sailing conditions, we were neck and neck, yeah. both full throttle, unassisted, which tells me that, you know, the weather sort of played a little bit more on the EPDL, mm -hmm. kind of bullying around a little bit, you know, right. pushing around, slowing it down. It sits a little bit higher. Those are just really good elements that I appreciated. But whenever we were coming in conditions like this, it was good to know that they were neck and neck mm -hmm. pretty much without unassisted which yeah. it makes you it makes you think like where do you want how do you want to put your money do you want a kayak that doesn't come with a drive mm -hmm. and install a motor mm -hmm. or do you just want the full package yeah you know what i mean there's we're in this like yeah innovation age where it's just we don't know which direction to go mm -hmm. and i think this this solves some issues for me yeah so i think the same here i mean you know the simplicity was the big part for me, you know, how simple the unit was to operate, put in, press a button, it's right there, a nice console right between, you know, your, your knee area. I mean, I thought that the simplicity was the biggest um, takeaway from, a, from an awesomeness standpoint, does that make sense? Um, but what I, the, I guess the one thing that I would say, especially in, in this type of fishing conditions, very shallow flats, you know, stocking fish, that kind of thing, it, it probably would be a little bit cumbersome, you know, in the flats where you have to lift the drive then kind of, you know, then start using your paddle and that kind of thing. And I think that's where the pedal drive and stern drive motor kind of takes a little bit of advantage. Mm -hmm. 
you know, as far as the versatility and ease of use when you're on the water, hey, I can simply just pull the motor up, use my pedals, use my paddle, and, and we're, we're, we're getting busy. But, you know, the other thing that I thought was really amazing was the size of the battery. You know, the, you know, when I looked at the battery, the 36 volt, 20 amp hour battery, that's kind of like, yeah. man, it looks like a little motorcycle battery. I said, there's no way this thing's not gonna make it, right? Like, we're gonna go like 30 minutes and this thing's gonna die. <laughs> Guys, I had this pegged at five speed, which is full speed for a mile all the way back to the house. And when you look at the battery life, it's still showing pretty damn near 100%. Yeah. Blown away, dude. Like, yeah. the battery on this thing, when I looked at it, I said, there's no way. But man, I, I'm really surprised the efficiency and how minimal battery consumption this thing took on. So, super big win for me from that standpoint. I'm skeptical at first, but <laughs> dude, yeah. this thing rocked it. So, yeah, yeah. that was the other, the other thing. I think when we pulled up to the back here of your canal here, um, we were like, all right, well, how much battery did you use? How much battery you got? And then when we peeked over and we saw all four bars still filled, I was like, dude, <laughs> this can't be right, man, <laughs> you know? But I mean, that that's um, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, now you got you have decisions to make, you yeah. know? Because some systems, you got to buy the battery, you got to buy the motor, you got to buy the kayak, uh -huh. or do you just want to get it all in one? Yeah, I think a lot of people, based on my interactions with customers, is that they're looking for something that's simple, man. They don't want, yeah. you know, if they wanted a, like a super, they'd go out there and buy a, a motorboat with a, you know, 70 horsepower in the back and, you know, all these switches and buttons. This thing's simple. Yeah. And I think that's the piece. And to your point, you know, you look at it dollar for dollar. You know, when you look at this boat being, you know, plus $6,000, people are like, God almighty. But to your point, if you wanted an Outback or you wanted a lesser boat, you know, Compass, PA, you know, yeah, the boat's in the $4,000 range. But by the time you do add that Newport Torquedo Bixby battery, all that stuff, you're looking at about the same price. So I think that's kind of like, you know, quality boat, motorized, you know, you're looking at about the same you oh, know, yeah. value, right. uh, value standpoint. Now, long range use, um, how long will it last? Only time will tell. We, there's no way we could tell that, but you know, I think just from the fit and finish and the overall construction and the, the name Old Town and the amount of ingenuity they put in their products, you know, I think we know it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a beat. The EPDL is almost a reminder and a breath of fresh air to not forget about the athletic side of kayak fishing. Its overall speed has improved to compete with the best on the market, but still keeping true to its design. Instant reverse, manual if needed, assisted if you wanted, or pure motor as desired. Its price point is already on par for those who have purchased premium kayaks with second party motors. All that aside, what's even more astonishing is the size of battery and how much power you actually get out of it. It's clean, simple, and all inclusive. All that's left is to board some fish. My name's Chris Castro. You're watching Top Gear Kayak Fishing with Next Level Fishing TV. Thanks for watching. Thank you.